You're listening to the Broadway Podcast Network. Without further ado, the Dear Friends Podcast. Dear friends, spill your woes to your musical family. Dear friends, they will take your questions and turn them into nuggets of wisdom. And anecdotes in an otherwise cynical world. Dear friends... Hi, I'm dear friend Emily. I'm dear friend Christy. And I'm dearest friend Jess. And welcome to dear friend, a write an advice podcast for the musical minded. How are you guys doing today? Doing uh, fine. I'm feeling, I'm feeling spicy. Ooh. I'm yeah. feeling controversial. I'm well, hydrated. I'm medicated. I'm good. <laughs> that's good. We got a write in letter today. Um, you know, from a good old friend, Jason Robert Crown. I don't think there's any relation to the other one, but <laughs> they're asking. Hiya, guys. What musicals do you think are vastly overrated and or overhyped? <laughs> well, I don't I really think, like yeah, the word. Is, <laughs> yeah, those are pretty loaded terms. I mean, there is, yeah, there's a lot of, there's a lot of shows that, you know, a lot of people love and I'm like, yeah, not getting it or it's, yeah. yeah. There's a lot yeah. of reasons why people don't like shows. They don't resonate with you. Um, you know, it's, you know, it rubs you the wrong way based on your personal experience or, you know, maybe you did it in high school and you had to listen to that one song 50 million times and you never want to hear it again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my list consists of musicals I... I'm kind of like, I don't get it about mm -hmm. and musicals that I actively hate. So yeah. <laughs> it should be a little controversial. But again, folks, this is subjective. Subjective. You can yes. love these shows oh. and we still love you. A lot, a lot of you love these shows. shows are you're fine. We love you. But your yes, opinion we is all have no, our opinions. Yeah. <laughs> I do want to say for my list specifically, I didn't want to recover information I've already said. I've kind of famously had opinions on Rent and Dear Evan Hansen <laughs> and stuff. So I really didn't mm -hmm. want to be like, well, let's pull out the old trunk ideas. So, <laughs> so I'm yeah. trying to do things that I think are spicier to my individuals here. Um, yeah. Don't worry. We'll, don't worry. I think we'll cover some of those you know, yeah. on our heads. <laughs> okay. I just wanted to say that up front. Like, well, well, people have known me to say shit about Rent and Dear Evan Hansen. I wanted to say, yeah, that's still true. These are different, different vibes, you know? <laughs> Yeah. yeah, and hey, we got we got five different top fives we're doing here. Heck so yeah. Who knows? Um, <laughs> Christy, do you want to start us? I guess I'll start um, because mine's going to be, um, you know, a little bit of a controversial take with my number five, and that is The Sound of Music. Oh, my goodness. <gasps> yeah, I'm sorry. It's, again, this is... <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, I love... Yeah, I was expecting that, but... And it's, you know, it's not a bad show. It's, you know, it's Rodgers and Hammerstein. You can't go wrong with it. But it's, I did it my sophomore year in high school and, you know, got tired of it. It's, you know, kind of, you know, kind of got a little cloying on me with the cutesy kids and, you know, everything. You're just like Christopher so, Plummer. <laughs> yeah, it's... <laughs> You know, and it, well, you know, the critics thought that at the time when it came out, they were like, "What? These guys are the guys who wrote Oklahoma and Carousel, yeah, groundbreaking." It's, it's I know, really, I know, it's so funny to think know, about. They really were at the time, the, they were like, "This is too treacly." It's really the safest of the um, Rodgers and Hammerstein shows because how can you go wrong with cute kids who are trying to run away from the Nazis? Who cannot? Who you yeah. know? Who cannot um, go along with that? And Hammerstein was, you know, died right he after. Was, he was, yeah, he was dying. It was his life. last yeah. show, so. But yeah, and it's it does have some great stuff. Um, yeah, yeah, climb every mountain, Edelweiss. Um, you know, it's got good songs. Um, you know, you, you know, I got some it. good, <clears throat> got some good liturgical stuff for the nuns. But it's like, yeah, it's I don't need to see. You know, I don't need it's to very see overexposed it at, all. Yeah. at this point. You see, yeah. I he, I have a similar opinion where I think it's a not that great musical, but I think it's a great movie. <laughs> I think the movie is significantly <laughs> better than its incarnation yeah. on stage. Yeah. Maybe I'm crazy. All right, Emily, what is your first choice? I don't think these are right, in any particular so... order. This isn't like a top mm -hmm. five. These are just five. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. This, yeah. Um, so this is low-hanging fruit, of course, but I'm, I'm going to go with it anyway. Uh, Dear Evan Hansen. <laughs> um, no fighting I here. Mean, I mean, I know, I know nowadays everyone kind of sees it, but like – when did it come out? 20 2016. 50, 2016. 20, yeah. 2016. Okay. So I remember teaching, um, you know, I teach middle schoolers performing arts. And I remember um, a lot of my students were just 
so into it Mm -hmm. and um every cabaret I would perform in there would be people doing songs from it and I remember being like I don't get all these songs sound the same I don't get it what am I missing and not like not in that every composer has a voice sounds the same it's like these literally just sound like the same song to me um and uh once I saw the movie and you know learn more about it I I I don't get it yeah I don't get it I don't get it. <laughs> yeah. It, um, I think yeah. it's a, I think, well, among many other things, I think it's a really bad match match of material and composers because Pasek and Paul, they are all about, you know, the inspirational, you know, power ballads, you know, and, you know, putting that voice into, you know, and, uh, you know, a, 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 an introverted, um, you know, socially awkward, you know, teenager who has difficulty communicating and you know makes a mess of everything yet it just doesn't fit yeah i I don't like it i don't i don't get it i don't i don't think it's particularly Mm -hmm. um groundbreaking or interesting and Mm -hmm. um you know i i I know uh the waving through window song is yeah is a good song, I guess, but um, yeah, I don't, I don't like it. I don't get why people like it. <laughs> I respect what the Pasek and Paul were trying to do originally, which was like an Evita style thing, where the big school bully, like high school, what is it, t- quarterback, dies of like a heart attack or like drug overdose, and then he swoops in and just takes over by claiming he's his best friend. Um, <laughs> that was at least an interesting, like, mean idea that at mm-hmm. least could have been something instead of what it became, which is manipulative and kind of mean. Yeah. Yeah, I don't like it. Yeah. Um, oh, is it my turn now? Yes, it, it is. is. Here's mine. All right, ready for anger from you two. I really don't like 1776. <gasps> <gasps> well, I think that, you know, that's valid, especially as as we're talking more about, you know, American history as it's taught versus what it actually is. And, you know, the whole founding fathers mythology, you know, that's, you know, that comes a lot harder to accept um, as we deal with, um, you know, all the stuff that we haven't been dealing with for the past 400 years. Yeah, that's and in that there, some people but also still don't just... want to deal with. They've got a song about triangle trade. I well, don't yes, know. they do. Weren't, weren't we just talking about how like it doesn't have to be historically accurate? Well, there is good. that. Yes, I agree. <laughs> it's not, and it does have but... a. It does have. It does have the molasses to rum to slaves, which is you know. <laughs> mm-hmm. But it is kind of I I it, the way it was written, it was very much more of a. Um, a musical play almost yeah um, it, has, it, it, it has the yeah. record for the longest period without music in a musical mm-hmm. and you like know that, what yeah. we, we can praise that, that and, but in all honesty it makes it boring it makes it really boring <laughs> yeah, i'm not lame. praising it i'm just saying it yeah, yeah i've like, got my script right these here. things mm-hmm. are just so dull to watch john adams as a lead character is probably the only thing with energy and ben franklin and aside from those two <laughs> it's just uh, so dull yeah and the movie adaptation is garbage. Like the, that. Like I don't know if it's. And there's I know, like that, you I know, know there's like, nothing. There's nothing for women in it. Yeah. I mean, you know. <laughs> he plays the violin. They recently yeah. did an all female and, production. And of it, and though. and um, I know. I would love to do that. I would yeah. love to play one of the founding fathers. In all female production of 1776. So I'd be up for that. Yeah. Yeah, and then um, yeah, I did a reading of. Oh God. Oh wow! I just forgot about this. My um, my theater company back in 2016, <laughs> the night of the election, oh. we were like, we were like, let's read 1776. It'll be great. It'll be really fun. And then when we get out, Hillary Clinton will be president. <laughs> oh jeez! Oh my reading, god! Oh, halfway geez, through that didn't the go reading, well. I guess it was 2015. Yeah, uh, halfway through the reading, we got very, very, very depressed. But uh-huh. anyway, I played um, uh, Abigail. I remember, and that mm-hmm. was fun. But um. That's so yeah, depressing. I mean, it is, it is, it is yeah. a stuffy history show. It's a boring, yeah. stuffy history show, and the film adaptation is really bad, and the extended version is even worse. Um, <laughs> please don't request that on my Patreon. I really don't want to talk about it anytime soon. <laughs> um, all right, Christy, what's your next one? Okay, so this next one, I don't know if I would say it's overrated so much as overdone, and that would be Annie. Yeah, I mean it's you know, and I kind of mm. I'm kind of conflicted about it because it really does have some great songs. I mean, Easy Street is one of my all time favorite villain songs. NYC is fantastic. Even Tomorrow, you know, it's like that kind of you know 
sweet, you know, little kid optimistic thing. But You're forgetting one of the God, best songs ever times... written. Thank you, Mr. Hoover. Yeah. My God, how many times has this been done on Broadway and on film and on television? Yeah. I mean, please. Can we find um, something else? As a performing else? arts teacher yeah. of children. Can we find something it's, else it's to do with like our, ki- our kids? Matilda is right there. <laughs> Matilda's flipping hard yeah. though dude yeah okay, I've been, I've, i'm teaching revolting children to my middle schoolers right now and it's good it's working out but that like seven eight meter into like four four yeah. thing it's oh, crazy yeah. there's a reason why i do you're never fully dressed without a smile with like kindergartners like, <laughs> yeah 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 so yeah but, it's but not, you're right it's not you're right bad. we need to mix it up it's not bad it's uh you know it's yeah. one of those shows a lot of people probably came into music theater with either because mm-hmm. they were taken to it because it's a kid you know kid-friendly show or they were in the cast film. so it's a great gateway show on that angle it's just it's everybody has done it and please let's do something yeah. else <laughs> fair enough emily what's your next one um, I feel like I feel like this is going to be controversial, um, at least for listeners. Um, Legally Blonde. Oh. I I mm-hmm. don't. I've taught it. Um, now I, I'm going to go. I'm going to preface this by saying Legally Blonde. The film came out when I was in college, and I love that movie. And like I I watched it to death. So the musical mm-hmm. was just never going to live up in my mind because it's that same thing we talked about a few episodes ago. I just end up playing the movie in my head and act and I'm watch, mm-hmm. while I'm watching the musical but having taught directed Legally Blonde and seen a high school production of it um not like maybe two or three songs out of that score stick out to me I just don't think it's a very good score and yeah. I know a lot of people love it but um I I just don't care for it and um I remember like the search for Elle Woods thing I remember when they did like the pro shot on MTV with the live audience and I could only last about like 10 minutes Mm -hmm. because the mugging from Laura Bell Bundy was driving me crazy um so I just think this um again it's a good high school show it's a great show for kids because obviously there's Mm -hmm. a lot of parts and there's a lot of girl parts which is great yeah um and a lot of range of voices but I would never, unless I, I would never go see it unless I actively knew someone in the show and they were like, will you please come see yeah, me? Yeah, I think it's, I don't care for yeah. it. Yeah, as far as, you know, um, film, ad, you know, mu- film ad, uh, musical adaptations of films that mostly ex- exist just because people love the film, it's, you know, it could have been worse, but it's, it's okay. <laughs> Yeah, like, I don't think it's actively bad. No. Like, mm-hmm. there's some on this list that I think are actively bad. <laughs> um, for me, it just doesn't resonate, and it, like, never sticks in my brain. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there's that TikTok trend of everyone doing that Muni audition, <laughs> and I had completely forgotten that song until I heard it, and I went, oh, yeah, I've taught this, haven't I? <laughs> How did I forget this? How did I forget this? So, But you're um, right, yeah, apart from, I think apart from Oh My God, you guys, I couldn't remember in much of the score, so. Yeah, it, uh, there's... It, it either I think is actively bad sounding. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I remember I didn't like the um, oh god that stupid Ireland song is the stupidest. Oh yes, song I agree. Oh my god, yeah. I agree. Ever, it's so stupid. Um, and then like the workout song, mm-hmm. or I I don't like it. I I just don't think they're very good. So, anyway, legally bond. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Um, my next one. This is gonna be. I don't like this show. I don't like this. Show. <laughs> I don't like newsies, guys. Oh, that's okay. I really it's just not my thing. Boys dancing for fifty eight yeah. minutes. I don't need I mean, this. like the nostalgia factor was what yeah, got me it's, to see it. Yeah. And they fixed so many thank you, Harvey Firestein. He fixed problems right. with the film yeah, it's, the book. Again, but you know I get it. I get it. Yeah, again, you know, it's a you know, a cult the film is a cult classic, but I think a lot of people forget when it first came out, it was a flop and you know, you can mm-hmm. see why it was a flop. It was uh-huh. you know, yeah. Disney and it trying like to bring a, back the golden age musical and it just didn't yeah. work. Yeah, it was a, a barren wasteland for movie musicals at the time that weren't animated. Mm-hmm. And the only reason I saw it is they used to play it on the Disney Channel. Right. And then it was like, ooh, cute boys dancing, and you watch the first 30 minutes, and then you don't have to watch them anymore. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Newsies. <laughs> <laughs> Open the gates and seize the day. Yeah. All right. All right. Um, what about you, Chrissy? What's your next one? Oh, jeez. I got a Book of Mormon. <laughs> okay i do not you know i have 
I have issues with Trey Parker and Matt Stone. Chief among them are that they do not know the difference between being vulgar because it contributes to the humor and being vulgar just because you think it's funny. Because there's, there's like moments where they're actually, you know, trying, they're doing stuff that's actually pretty good. Like, um, you know, the, I believe, you know, where he says, I believe in 1970, whatever, God changed his mind about black people. That is a pretty good satirical lyric. But mm-hmm. then you have, you know, people saying, fuck you, God, in the ass mouth and cunt over yeah. and over again, just because you think it's funny to say those words. Yeah. And I mean, yeah, it's, it's a mess. You know, my tolerance for gross out humor is very low, which is another issue I have with them. Um, you know, obviously, you know, the black representation, you know, you look at it now yeah. and it's kind of, yeah. And, you yeah. know, it's, it, you know, you're talking about things like, you know, the AIDS epidemic and female genital mutilation, which are, you know, serious issues in Africa. Um, but, you know, you're just saying that because you're just talking about it just because you think it's funny to say everybody has AIDS and that way and to say the word clitoris over and over again. So it's, yeah, I think, you know, I think it's, I, I like the idea and I like some of the satirical stuff that they have in there, but it's, you know, a lot of frat boy humor and not that my thing. Hasn't aged well, I'd say. Yeah. And it definitely yeah. has not aged well. <laughs> um, all right, Emily, what about your next one? <laughs> Spring Awakening. Ooh. <laughs> I, I remember getting the the recording for Spring Awakening mm-hmm. and having seen it at the Tony Awards and I was like, oh, I'm so ready for some <clears throat> angst. Yeah. And literally like two songs on the soundtrack are like that. Everything else was like, <clears throat> and I just was like, I'm yeah, I, I just, it never, I, I thought it was going to be something that it wasn't. And then I've just never, mm-hmm. It's another one where I don't really like the score. I think there's like a few good songs. Um, I think I'm a little I'm a little past my prime to be kind of connecting with this like teenage angst. Um, mm-hmm. a, a, it's fine if it connects with you and you like it. I don't think it's a bad show, unlike yeah. my take on Legally Blonde. But I just have never been able to get into it. Just. Yeah. I've tried. I've tried so many times, you guys, and I just can't do it. I get, I get that. That's fair. Um, and honestly, I think, you know, there's, you know, it doesn't quite delve as much into uh, a lot of the complexities of the story as it could. I mean, it never hmm. really deals with the fact that when you get down to it, Melkier rapes Went- Vendla. Yep. And, Consent is you know, dubious. Yeah. It, yeah. I mean, and I'm not, yeah, it, it, it's just... It's, and I think it's not even that. I just get bored. Like I'm just bored watching yeah, it but and bored it's... listening to it. And I would, I, I should be taken away by more of that drama. Right. There is a lot of drama in it. And for whatever reason, I just sit there and go. Hm. Yeah. And it's it's not you know it's not that it's it's complex actually because I honestly don't think Melchior understands what he's doing um, because in that way he is still a teenage boy who doesn't know what he doesn't know and has been failed by adults in that regard but we never get into it because we're presenting him you know as you know this angsty you know rebellious rebellious teenager who wants to be wants to fight the system yeah and i think like a lot of the younger audiences for it just see it all as hot like they're like Ooh, yeah Grant, it's well yeah hot. and it's it, all you, hot. And you know like, yeah <laughs> <laughs> because you know it's it's a little like rent in that aspect aspect because you're at that age where you are like mm-hmm. you know you just want to you just yeah. want to fight against stuff. You want to figure out who you are, and you don't know who you are, and you've got all mm-hmm. these hormones and feelings. Oh, I get, and sex. I get why it's popular. Yeah, and I get why. So yeah, people and gravitate but yeah, and I just... also, but going back on you, I also get why mm-hmm. you know if you've passed that um, in your in your life. I can't life, really go back. Yeah, like, I you're can't like, really bring myself to care. Yeah, <laughs> you're you're past that in your life, and it's like okay, yeah, yeah. All right, so I think I'm next. Um, you're next. Oh, this might. Should I go with the one I know people won't care if I'm upset about? No, oh, fuck. I'm gonna go with the comfort- confrontational one. I don't like Avenue Q. Not my thing. V- very much not my thing. Um, I think there's a lot of people who don't really yeah. like Avenue Q nowadays. I am very baffled that it won the best Tony um, up against like Wicked and Carolina. Well, Change. that's because they did a huge promotional thing, and then afterwards they had yeah. to change the rules so he couldn't do that anymore. And I remember at the time it was it was a big deal at the time because. Mm-hmm. 
Thoroughly Modern Millie and Urinetown were up against each other the year before, I mm-hmm. think. And and Thoroughly Modern Millie won when everyone thought Urinetown won. And so everyone thought the same thing was going to happen with Avenue Q and Wicked. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I remember mm-hmm. I was I I went to New York for the first time around then and I remember those posters yeah were everywhere yeah um I know a lot of people don't really like Avenue for me I know there's of course stuff that hasn't aged well but I I I don't know it's like I connect it with my college days I yeah. so much I just really resonate I, too but I would totally get why you wouldn't like it yeah <laughs> the, I I agree you know I think there's you know some really great stuff in there I mean uh especially when it does get serious like with stuff like for now and there's a fine yeah. fine line Mm -hmm. Um, Those are some really great pieces. But on the other hand, again, you have stuff like everyone's a little bit racist where (laughs) it's just like low PC culture. And it's like, okay, you know, you started off at a good point, but then you lost it. I I also there's like one character that becomes actively homeless and it's hilarious that they're homeless throughout most of the second. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh. Yeah. Doesn't, doesn't sit well with me anymore and I did not enjoy watching it. Maybe I'm just too old to laugh at the (laughs) internet being for porn. Um, yeah maybe um christy what's your next one oh geez dear evan hansen for pretty much the reasons (laughs) everybody said um you know it's you know the score is a lot of it's the same it really doesn't treat you know the whole mental health thing as well as it could it doesn't really address you know the issue you know evan's you know not evan yeah evan hansen's issues or whatever and yeah it's it's like they just didn't stick the landing. It's like it's like the yeah, it's, the message they're portraying is very different than the the character. Absolutely, actions. you know, yeah. yeah. It's like talking about you will be found, and you know, in a in a space where you know that's a whole lie, and it's you know, yeah. But they're still but they're playing it straight with the you know the Pasek and Paul, Paul inspirational ballad. So it's like, okay, yeah. uh, do you understand that this is an issue, or do you feel that this is you know? actually a big inspirational moment so yeah. overrated <laughs> um emily what about you okay so um joseph and the amazing technical Hard agree. <laughs> fucking hate oh, God, this show yes. i hate this show and every time i tell someone that they go it's for kids and i go so what <laughs> it, kids yeah. musicals annie is good uh, matilda is good Joseph is so, I find it insipid and stupid, and I hate it, and I'm, I'm sorry, you're never going to convince me otherwise. I'm, the, the one blessing is that it's short. Yeah, it, <laughs> yeah, and then they threw in all these stupid pastiche numbers. Mega, oh, my God, if oh, I, I have to hear one more angel in heaven, I will be a oh. die a happy woman. God. Yeah, and red and yellow and, and, green and, and, brown and brown it's and like the and... worst of Andrew Lloyd Webber. Yeah. And I know it's like one of his first projects. Um, it's one of I... the, yeah, it's an early show that should have stayed like that juvenilia that you look back and it's like, yeah, I really didn't know what I was doing. You know, he should have just kind of mm-hmm. left that in the. But, but yeah. uh, children's theaters do it and community theaters do it all the time because, again, bunch of parts bunch of kid roles oh yeah it was like it was like a huge um holiday thing at the arvada center uh like about 10 15 years ago but i actively avoid productions of it i just do Mm -hmm. not care for that show very much it's okay Mm -hmm. if you do it's fine i just it's like inane to me Mm -hmm. it's just like stupidity on stage (laughs) that's how mean i'm gonna be about this i I love how angry emily is because she's always very much like you know what everyone everyone loves their own show and you know uh, and just seeing her this vitriolically angry about a musical brings me such joy Uh yeah well that's not not even my number one yet i know yeah um next one um mean girls don't like it don't like it that's Yeah. yeah Legally Same. Blonde Part 2. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, except the Legally Blonde guy eventually did Heathers, which is a show that I kind of respect and enjoy yeah. and I can appreciate. Mean Girls has nothing to offer. Absolutely <laughs> nothing to just offer. Just yeah. quotes from the movie and uh, some songs. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just the same shit. Like, Legally Blonde br- took a little bit of liberties in some places to mm-hmm. expand upon the story and bring something new. It wasn't just quoting, and it gave some moments where more characters could be mm-hmm. more fleshed out. Nothing. This this show gives you nothing. Yeah, nothing. All right, that's it. Like Mean Girls, I I don't <laughs> like it. I don't think I can mm-hmm. expand upon. And I'm also just not a big fan of high school musicals. Not 
not the High School Musical series. I mean, that's fine. <laughs> well, I'm not a big fan of that either. But <laughs> that's for kids in a way where I'm like, all right, if kids yeah. want to do that, like I, I mm-hmm. would not. I don't think it would be the worst thing in the world to watch. Um, this mm-hmm. I don't want High School Productions. I think it's a gross movie that flippantly used the N word a couple times that a lot of people forget about. <laughs> like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, that show is so weird, and it feels so 2000. 16 Trump anger let's be vulgar vibe in the Mm -hmm. same way that Hamilton feels like Obama uh, administration confidence of the new world yeah (laughs) Um, yeah so Christy what's your next one okay probably a little controversial but it's always rubbed me the wrong way I will never like Greece Yes. Yes. I mean, I'm well, sorry. you just took my number one, baby. Okay. Okay. My number one is also okay. my Greece. number one is Greece. Okay. My Greece. <laughs> oh my god! All right, we all hate Greece. Okay. All right, all right. Okay. We all, hate all right. Greece. I am sorry. Everybody does it, and it is you know, it's just like a bunch of stupid teenagers being stupid teenagers yes. for two hours. It's it's not up. even just like like fun, like yeah. nothing. It's like actively harmful yep. yes nothing. it's got, got gross toxic masculinity it's got girls bullying girls changing got, who you are in the yeah, end to get the guy yeah girls being pressured to have sex and being you know shamed when they're not having sex and being shamed when they are having sex and and you people know, forget how fucking dirty that show is it and is i'm not against yeah. dirty yeah. and I'm vulgarity surprised they still do it in high school that's the thing is that they do it in high schools all the time. And I saw a local high school production, I don't know, maybe a decade ago because I knew some students in it. Mm-hmm. And it was one of those things where I was like, okay, I'm going to see a high school production of Grease. And I'm sitting there and I'm going, oh, God. Oh, God, I feel uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Oh, God, I feel uncomfortable. Yep. Like the whole time as it was going, I'm like, ugh, these children should not be doing this. And yeah. then the other thing is like, we all watched the movie when we were way too young, correct? Uh-huh. Because I watched mm-hmm. it when, like from birth. Ooh. Okay, so... A lot of kids are still like that. A lot of students of mine will be like, let's do Grease, like 13-year-olds. And I always say to them, we can do maybe a song. We can do like Summer Nights or something, or we go together for like a show or something. But mark my words, you are 13. Even Summer Nights. We are never doing Grease. Even Summer Nights, he's talking about how he's getting it on with this girl. Come on. Uh Huh? Yep. I mean, yep. yeah, it's it's and trash. It's, I, I, it has oh, some good oh, songs. Oh. I mean, Summer Nights has some decent He Said, She Said going on. There are worse sure. things that I could do. Um, I mean, Rizzo's, you know, Pregnancy the best Scares song Subplot is probably the best part of it. But it's completely, it just, yeah, and the, the stage show, it just goes away. It. There's no resolution. It's and just I'm assuming sorry, that I know, she's pregnant. I know there's been, like, this movement to try to rehabilitate the ending, saying that Sandy is, you know, liberating herself from eh. her from yeah the from yeah. the uh social conditioning that says she has to be a good girl but honestly i think she's she just creating one form of pressure for another because the entire yeah. show everybody's being like what you don't smoke you don't drink ew what are you some kind of uh-huh. virgin and look at me well, and he- sandra d and it's yeah, yeah i don't think you know i feel like she just caved into that and it doesn't it it does not sit well with me and it never ever yeah. will um, well, and this is the other thing. So my husband was in Greece, um, national tours. He did mm-hmm. it in Vegas. He did it for a while. Um, and he met the guy who wrote it, and he said he is a piece of shit who wrote this show about actual people in his life. And, like, like there was a Rizzo, like, a girl got knocked up and, like, actively did it to, like, be a mean asshole and, like, shit on, like – people on the show and like they all like make fun of the nerds and the goody yeah. two shoes in yeah. the show and it's not fun and there's no lesson learned it's yeah, just it's, like it's I, people i'm not being... against watching shitty people on stage but there needs to be yeah, a reason for it it's the stupid stuff you did in high school but it's presenting it like hey wasn't this great no it was not yeah. great i hated it don't yeah. remind me of it can I talk yeah, for and- a moment about Grease 2, which takes a lot. Oh, it's my a, God. I think it's better than the first one because at least he he doesn't change who he is. He has a part of the personality that suits what she's interested in. Like, Well, Grease 2 is like the 
the room. There's like a guy who like yeah. tries to trick a girl into sex by saying there's a bomb. Scare there's or an entire like that. song about, it's about reproduction. I, it's, I, yeah, I love Grease too because it's just bad yeah. and bad, but like bad like how Love Never Dies or the Room yes, is. Like it's Grease, just fun. the original is just oh god, wait, they're making some. Pink Ladies show now. Oh yes, aren't like they? there's yeah. some pre- the rise of the Pink Ladies. We do not need a prequel about the freaking Pink Ladies. Come on. And the problem is, is that it was during the 70s when we were getting that 50s nostalgia really, mm-hmm. really hard. And so that there are a lot of very, very catchy songs in Greece. Oh, there it's is. What, God, yes. It's why it keeps being done. Because mm-hmm. yeah, we go together is fun. All those like. Four chord change songs. Yeah. Uh, C, Z, 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 yeah, A, Greece, whatever that. Yeah, Greased Lightning, yeah. even though it's basically a song about compensating Beauty for something. Beauty School Dropout, they're all catchy. The problem is they're, they're catchy songs that are portrayed by horrible, horrible people <laughs> that I hate. Mm-hmm. And I didn't realize till I was older that they were horrible. Mm-hmm. And then when I realized that, I was like, God, why did my mother let me watch this so much? <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm still just in, in over ecstatic joy that at the end of the day we all came together. <laughs> on, we all came together days. to fight the true enemy, <laughs> yeah. which is Greece, which needs this to is die. Such a beautiful thing. Yeah, it's one Us of those musicals that people who don't I think Emily people who died. don't know anything about musicals, or people who like just casual musical likers, that, you know, they'll just be like, "Oh, Greece is my favorite," and I'm like, "Yeah, fine." <laughs> You don't know anything. It's bad. Yeah, that's the one way we're very elitist. It's yeah. yeah. I'll be a snob about this forever. It's it's a piece of shit. And yet sometimes I'll just like it'll come on TV and I'll just kind of keep keep watching it for a little bit because yeah. I want to see John Travolta dance or something. It's so yeah. stupid. God, that musical. <laughs> wow. Well, why don't we promote our wonderful content for the world to find us other places where we can talk shit about Greece? <laughs> Emily, I talk shit about it. Greece too. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. Reproduction. Reproduction. Pus- Didn't <laughs> Andrew Garfield <laughs> just say that that's work. one of his favorite mo- movie musicals? <laughs> Jeff <laughs> said that. that. No, no, Andrew Garfield. Oh. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Yeah, I remember that. It's like, oh, gee. No, baby, come here. Let me introduce I, you he to some song time. He also yeah, yeah. recently just said multiple times in an interview, Brian Stokes Mitchell was famously the fan of the opera. I'm like, that's Norm Lewis. He did a racist. No, he wasn't. Yeah, he yeah, wasn't. Right. I, would mind, I wouldn't mind seeing Brian Stokes Mitchell as He'd fandom, be fine, but, but it was Norm but... Lewis. Yeah, it yeah. was Norm Lewis. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, uh, my, my stuff. Um, yeah, I'm Emily Clark. You can, what, it, what, where's my brain? Okay, <laughs> my show is Stealing Focus. You can find me at Stealing Focus on YouTube and on Patreon. And um, my uh, handle is Emily A. B. Clark uh, on all the socials you could possibly find. All right. Yeah. All right, Christy. All right, I am at Musical Hell on YouTube, Twitter, Tumblr, Facebook, um, you know, a lot of other stuff. I've got Patreon, I've got merch. I talk a lot about overrated shows and <laughs> um, enjoy, you know, getting mad at them. So mm-hmm. um, I'm Jesse D. McAnally on Twitter. I have a show called Musicals of Cheese. Um, check them out, I guess, if you're bored. <laughs> 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 well, if you're bored just watch all our stuff please yeah. yeah if you're bored for an evening and you want to just like listen to me and my friend talk about musicals in a catty and crass way as described by paul gordon's <laughs> um manager let go for it mm-hmm. <laughs> um we'll see the late meatloaf's enemy oh yeah yeah <laughs> andrew's arch enemy was ne- meatloaf and andrew won mm-hmm. but anyway we'll see you next time on the Dear Friends podcast bye bye Bye. Grease sucks Grease sucks (laughs) Dear Friends spill your woes to your musical family Dear Friends they will take your questions and turn them into nuggets of wisdom and anecdotes in an otherwise cynical world, dear friends.